Hello and welcome to Agile World. How are you, Carl? And have you caught the sun? Is 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 a sun up in no, your no, area? I, not, we don't have sun in Scotland. <laughs> this is me trying to get up the stairs. I, I'm just rubbing it in actually because <laughs> I've heard that you don't have sun in your area of the country or heat apparently. Where we're well, no, I mean that's that's the marketing that uh, Visit Scotland uses to to keep everyone away, while we actually spend most of the time in swimming trunks. Um, <laughs> wow well no offense that's not something i want to see <laughs> you know, that's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's that lockdown situation isn't it you almost feel that you regularly got it i'm gonna do it you're confirmed that you are wearing trousers oh no i'm not doing that <laughs> Oh, well, it's another Agile World show, and we've actually got our good old buddy, our friend, Joe. How are you doing? Hey, doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me on. So, we're intrigued. Tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself. We want to know your background. Well, first, let me start by saying I do have pants on. I'm not going to show them to you. <laughs> uh, j- but, uh, but, but for the English audience, that, that means something else. So uh, let, let, let's say you've got oh, yeah. trousers on instead. Got Tra- trousers. Sorry, trousers on. Trousers on. That's we right. all should be wearing right. pants, but are we wearing trousers? <laughs> well, I know yep. in the States they're called pants. I'm just, uh, I'm just doing a translation yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, in case you couldn't tell from how I sound, I am from the U.S. Uh, g- g- yeah, grew up in Philly, uh, moved down to Dallas, Texas about, uh, I don't know, January of last year. So um, for anybody that's wondering back in Philly, I have not switched. I am still a Philadelphia Eagles fan. I just want to put that <laughs> out there. We're mortal enemies, you know, you got you to gotta rep the team. That's what I grew up with. Those were the are, rules of my household. Are we going to get some uh, Eagles hate from putting this video up? I don't know. <laughs> or or we get Eagles a, love? Unless you're a Cowboys fan. I don't know. Most <laughs> most of the media, they don't really like us. Um, yeah, we don't care, though. So that's, that's, right, how that's it fine. Goes. Just be yourself. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah, when I was growing up, it's only two rules in the household. You root for the Eagles. You root for whoever's playing against the Cowboys. Those are the only two rules in the house. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, I uh, I moved down right around the same time that uh you know I, that IBM moved us down here, so that's that's where I came from. I've got about I don't know ten years of experience in sales. I started off selling door to door, uh in in Philadelphia selling Verizon FiOS, which was uh, a trip. But uh, I'm just thinking, after... you know, walking around with one of those IBM machines under your arm must have been really <laughs> hard work, you know. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, no, no. I was to walk around with like the mainframe under my uh, <laughs> under my armpits, but yeah, um, so yeah. Started off door to door, then uh, then sold. Uh, you know, I was a financial advisor for a little while, and then I was like, hey, you know what? I really like the idea of having a base salary. So then I went over to <laughs> I went over to uh, IBM through a referral, and then I've been spending probably the past six ish years uh, out of ten. Uh, at IBM selling, you know, technology and software. So um, one of the, that's, that's really where I got my first uh, exposure to agile. I really didn't know what it was or, you know, I mean, you wouldn't obviously being a financial advisor or uh, being a, being a door to door salesperson. But um, yeah, I was kind of like the tip of the spear when uh, IBM came in and uh, one of your previous guests, I want to give him a shout out, Anthony Coppage. He's, uh, you know, when he talks, I listen. He's a, he's a brilliant agilist and he's a, you know, a, a member of this podcast. He's been here a couple of times. So a lot of what I know, I would say, I don't know, probably 75% of what I know about agile is probably from right. Anthony. So right. if okay, you hear any- stop the show now, we've heard it all before then. Yeah. <laughs> what's new? Right. What's new? So what's new? So so I, I'm the young blood coming in. I, I had, I've got the new ideas. I kind of took what he came with and uh, kind of I'm going to give you the remix of Anthony Cappage's takes on uh, on some a couple different things. So cool. Oh, I'm going to mix this up a bit. You you yeah. mentioned Philly and then you mentioned remix. And do you know what comes into my mind right now? Wiki wiki wow, 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 wow. I had to add that in. Uh. <laughs> I had to add that in. <laughs> Uh, uh, we're, we're not trying to be culturally uh, um, uh, sound, by the way. I'm down with the kids. <laughs> I am down with the kids. Fair enough. Uh, well, here, 
By the way, here's here's a fun fact about uh, about the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So in that opening scene, right when they're shooting some hoops in West Philly, that's not actually West Philly. That's Fairmount. That's where I used to live. That's Roberto Clemente Park, actually. So um, okay. yeah. Anyways, if you're from Philly, you probably get that reference. If you don't, no worries. But um, <laughs> but anyways, going back to uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was, you know, based in, based in North America, you know, I'm down in Dallas. Um, I was part of the digital sales organization. It's kind of like part of their sales and marketing strategy. And uh, like I said, I was kind of part of this pilot program where Anthony came in and he was kind of tasked with coming in and figuring out what's going to take to be agile in this like digital sales space. So he rolled, you know, he and, you know, the IBM higher ups rolled it out to some of the managers and the sellers. And I had just inherited a new team. I just got promoted to uh, manage the cloud and data platform team for the travel and transportation industry. So when when he came in and kind of pitched this idea to us, it was how do we take this one way of thinking to another way of thinking? And of of course, with that, there's going to come some framework. And his idea was that that he you know, that he pitched me that I followed was if you could change the mindset then the behaviors are going to follow. So that's how I trained my reps was kind of on the mindset first on how are we going to apply agile for sales and take the really good ideas for over from software development. It's not just for software and project to manage a uh, software and project management, right? Um, it's, it's like, uh, it's a lot different in, in the digital sales organization, obviously. So um, we took some of the ideas from Kanban and scrum and uh, the the whole idea is just like being agile at the core, and it's not just the it's not just the framework, right? So, um, anyways, uh, I what I what how I like does to... that affect your sales? I mean, you know, I, I can understand how it affects the people. Uh, did it improve? Did it slow down sales? Did it, you know, because normally when you so, apply agile or a new framework, it damages things to start with before you start yeah, getting any value. It, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. It got worse before it got better, Carl. So yeah. like anything, like it, we went through a little, a little dip in productivity as we were trying to, you know, figure out how to incorporate this mindset. And a big part of it was instead of bolting on something extra onto what you're doing already, right? It's fundamentally changing how you are doing what you're doing. So a good example that I like to give is pretty much every good employee does this. They take a look at what what, what is the stuff that I got to do for the day. Let's rank order those in terms of priority and then do them priority wise. And then, um, you know, like Eisenhower matrix, we, we came up, we learned about that in the early days of like, what's, in, what's urgent, what's important. If it's both, then we do it now. If it's neither, then we delete it. And if it's uh, one or two of the others, then we would either delegate it or um, otherwise. The the uh, the Eisenhower matrix and the the prioritization of work is something that I feel like everybody really does if they're if they're a good employee. Instead of just logging on, seeing what's at the top of my inbox, working my way down according to you know chronologically of when it landed in my inbox. Um, that's not a it's not a very efficient way of doing it. it's a it's a way of staying busy, but it's not a way of you know uh, prioritizing your work. Um, one of the one of the big things that came in with uh, with this as as far as framework was the structured feedback mechanism, and I, I could kind of get into that in a little bit. But I think you know in my experience, I think that you know what we're kind of seeing today is kind of a common thread in in all these different profitable customer centric agile native organizations. What, what do all these guys have in common? And from what I can tell, what, what a lot of them have in common is, is a way of understanding what's working and what's not in a holistic and a scalable way. From sales, that's super important because then that's taken not just a bunch, it's kind of like a track team, you know, where the sprinter doesn't really talk to the high jumper on like what they're doing, but they're all kind of working on the same team together in their own independent kind of way. That's That's like, kind of what we were trying to avoid is how do we how do we take that track team style and go to a collaborative thing where we're saying hey what this is this is what I did this week this is what 
was working for me. This is what didn't work for me. Here's what I'm going to be changing for the following week. And then when all of the reps are sharing and A, B testing and doing like the things that are running an experiment, coming up with a hypothesis and testing it and then saying, Hey, this is, this is what I, this is the results of the, 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 uh, the science experiment at the end of the week. That's, that's really kind of where we started shifting. So um, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated because sales is salespeople consider what they do to be high art. You know, it's, it's all uh, about me. It's I'm individual. What I do is unique. Uh, I build a rapport with my clients and that's why they let me uh, into their offices to do the business. And you're, mm -hmm. what you're actually indicating is that you're creating templates and uh, sets of behaviors that anyone could use. I mean, uh -huh. how, how do they respond to that? Because I mean, surely the high flyers are like, I don't want this. And I don't yeah. want to tell you what I know. <laughs> yeah. So I liken it to baseball kind of, right? Where if you, uh, if you just learn how to, if you, if you take somebody in that's brand new and you teach them how to throw a fastball reliably, and it's just a very systematic approach, you're going to get a percentage of people that, you know, respond well to that fastball. Okay. And once you, it's not a perfect analogy, but once you start learning as a pitcher, all right, I know that I have to throw a curveball if I want him to hit a home run, or if I have to throw this or that specific type of pitch, um, which actually, actually, no pun intended, pitch, uh, sales pitch, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then, then you, uh, you're coming up with a more customized approach that's based on the person and you have to do a lot of very active listening while you're doing it. And okay. Okay. So, so, that, so, so they, you're, the core, core capabilities that they build on unique skill sets from, and then that obviously impacts the sales process. Yeah, pretty much. You're starting off very systematic and you're working your way to a more customized pitch. Yeah. Um, but when somebody comes in new to the organization, you got to teach them how to throw a fastball and you got to teach them how to throw the things, how to do the things that work. And um, that's, that's kind of where we started collecting the data on is like, all right, what's, what's working and what's not and are, and starting to actually measure it and seeing, okay, if I change this little thing, what's going to, what are the side effects? Is it going to be better? Is it going to be worse? Is it going to be any difference whatsoever? And I taught them because I came, I came from a science background. I came from a biology major. I was pre-med in college before I, you know, my series of mistakes led me on to a sales career. <laughs> uh, is that how that uh, happens? I, I, I think that's the entire yeah. life experience of most people, isn't it? It's, it's a series of <laughs> unfortunate events. I'm now yeah. in sales. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, I always ask, what, what series of mistakes led you into a sales career? Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, th taking that and actually testing, is this st statistically significant what I'm doing? The, uh, you know, testing the null hypothesis, right? Um, so anyways, yeah, going back to, um, you know, what's working and what's not, seeing it both at the team member level and at the VP level and everywhere in between. And it's a tough thing to do. Um, it, it needs the proper mindset and the proper frameworks in place for the stuff to happen. So in, in, in order to, to do all of the things that, you know, any agile company would want to do, like, like let's expose inefficiencies and let's try to fix these broken legacy systems that are getting in the way and all these blockers and start bubbling those up to the, to the higher levels. Um, then you're able to start solving those structural problems. And then you're able to actually get twice the work done in half the time. Once you get those out of the way, if you want to do that though, every person needs to be able to make data-driven decisions. So you need to start having the discipline and the frameworks in place to collect those data points. I feel like everybody agrees with this, you know, at this point where the aggregation and the organization and the analysis of said data. Um, so yeah, going back to, you know, what my mentor, Anthony Coppage stated, that means kind of taking those qualitative insights and representing them in a, in a quantitative way. So that's kind of where, collaboration platforms kind of came into play for us. They started introducing a couple different software tools for us. So that's kind of like, you know, kids playing together in a sandbox. It was kind of like 
uh, the, the collaboration tool became for us on the sales team, it was like a visual collaboration hub. It was a dynamic and uh, adaptive place for all the team members, all the managers and, and even executives. They were in on that too. They all had access to it. So to be able to share ideas and then have th these feedback systems and, you know, you're able to see all this rele relevant information in a single, single source of truth, as they say. So um, all the while, uh, aligned on objectives and key results, the OKRs. So uh, there's a really good episode on Agile World, by the way, if you uh, if you're listening. So really? check. Really, I'm gonna yeah. that meetup live. I think yeah. it was. <laughs> there's, there's a good one on OKRs. So I I, I reckon I learned a lot about that. It kind of it's the the north star, so to speak, for for the company for your organization. But anyways, the the idea, the ultimate beneficiary is the customer here. Right. That's that's what it's all based on. It's it, that's the North Star is how do we help the customer? And by the way, you know what the side effect of serving and benefiting the customer is? Uh, profit, money. Right? <laughs> yeah. There's a salesman. Uh, uh, yeah. are, we talk, are we talking moolah? Yeah, we're talking <laughs> moolah, man. So I don't know. Do you do you think that's irrelevant? I don't know. I if you think no, that's I relevant, think I think it's I think very cool. relevant. I mean, it's, it's, you know, for some reason, people are a bit weirded out by talking about making money. But actually, you know, none of us would exist without being able to pay for stuff. So let, let's be mm -hmm. realistic about it. Uh, yeah. You're literally making a really good pitch here for that uh, Agile helps you make m more money which is not one that anyone's ever said before in, in, in explicit <laughs> terms, which is actually cool because actually it does. If you do, if you work better, you produce uh, higher quality outputs. Your customers are happy; they come back and they want more. Yep. Higher NPS scores means more money, guys. That's yep. that's uh, yeah, man. Um, I yeah, I think it's I think it's super relevant. I think it's super important. Um, and and it's valuable. And I think we should know all that stuff. And if if we don't know those data points, we don't know how to assess reality, right? Sorry, I cut you off, Sabrina. What were you going to ask me? I was just moving my mic as well. So come on and show us. How'd you do it? Yeah. Show us. G yeah. Give, away, give away how it all works so that we can okay. go away and do it as well. Show so. us some money. <laughs> I'll, there we go. Here we go. All right. I'm going to share my screen out, and I'm going to show you an example of something that I took, an idea that we implemented back at IBM, and we took I, I took it and kind of ran with it a little bit. So... Can you see what I'm looking at right here? Yep. Okay, cool. So in the top left-hand corner, what we have are the OKRs. So we've got targets, we've got objectives, we've got key results. You kind of think of this in terms of like a parent-child relationship. Again, Before I'm not we get go to the content, so this is just like a display board like Miro or Mural or one of those sort of products. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. This is okay. my own personal whiteboard that I'm using to uh, kind of demonstrate all these different ideas in this uh, kind of like a single source of truth, if you will. Yeah. And the way of, like I said, of representing qualitative insights in a quantitative type of way. Cool. So, um, all right, let's check it out. In the top left-hand corner here, you're going to see the targets, the objectives, and the key results. And key results being defined as actions and activities, the success criteria, what the things that we're going to do to achieve each objective, the parent of the key results, if you will. Um, down here, I have the explanation of what this is, right? What are retrospectives? Why are we doing them? How does it work? Okay. And the, the idea is to say what's working, what's not, and where are we going to change for the next sprint? And it gives all of these different insights and bubbles them up to the surface. And it takes this kind of role of master commander where the the manager is given the it's like all right we're going to storm in through the front and you guys are going to flank from the sides it's like no let's get all the soldiers together and figure out all right here's here's what we're trying to do what do you guys think right and kind of delegating the power down to the team member level which is kind of a almost revolutionary idea if, in, in my opinion um and this is how we came up with with feedback. It's like, uh, you know, what's what's the issue? Why is it the case? And what do you want me to do about it? If I'm your manager, you're bubbling up a some feedback. It can't just be like, oh, Salesforce sucks, or you know, like you got to give me some <laughs> something real to work with here. So 
if I'm going to be bubbling it up to to man it to upper management, I can't just be like, all right, f- five out of six guys just said that Salesforce sucks. Um, what's the issue? What? Why is this the case? Do you think? And then, what do you think leadership should go ahead and do about it? And this is great for trying to figure out how to, you know, fix legacy systems or, you know, like, like I was saying more, if we want to do twice the work in half the time, here's how I think we should go about trying to do it. So this is uh, the, what went well, what are we going to improve and what are the action items? And you could kind of drag these feedback boxes down and you could take stuff like, you know, in a, in a sticky note, just like I did and start putting in all the information. So I have it divided up by sprints. You could copy each of these things. It's all it's all pretty modular where it has it broken out into these little uh, blocks. But um, yeah, so you have sprint two, sprint three, sprint four, so on and so forth. And then if it uh, catches up to where my mouse is, hang tight. Let me scroll up. So up here is the Kanban part of it, right? This is where we're managing the prioritization of work where I was like, all right, I want to be able to go down and see, all right, what is John Smith doing right now? And I could see, okay, I get, he's got this, or, or it looks like it's, it's tagged to Ryan. I don't know who Ryan is. Anyways, this is what he got done for the day. This is what he's working on now. And this is what's in the to-do column for uh, the rest of the day. And I could see like, hey, why are you working on this? This is the higher priority item, the easier, more urgent item. This, this should have been over here in the done column by noon today, that type of. So it's taking a look at the, the prioritization of work is super important and, and managing that as opposed to inspecting the work, right? That's it, it's um, it's kind of like a kind of paradigm shift, if you will. You could also do it at the weekly level. You could do it at the monthly level. I have it all up here at the top so that anybody can just go and see how it, how is the team managing the work. And then after we do the retrospective, at oh, the can end I of the just week, ask a question on that? So in yeah. in terms of prioritization, so you, you're not micromanaging. What you're doing is you're observing that certain kind of works have a higher priority. How mm-hmm. how do they feed back that there are problems with it then? How did they give feedback of uh, blockers? Yeah. So during standups, we would be like, oh, okay. hey, here's every you know 15 minutes every morning we would get on the phone and we'd be like all right here's what i got done yesterday here's what i'm working on today if there were any blockers that would be the time to bubble them up and say hey I, this this training might get in the way of blah 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 or the, you know um, well, the, the guy's not been in the office for three days and no one knows where he is it's the- mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah that um this is also super cool too because you don't need to be in the office for it when covid hit we had to kind of change what we were doing but it wasn't changing that dramatically like we were we already had the systems in place to adapt to that and and just roll with the punches so when we all went it you know the being in a room and being co-located and and that was all part of the agile mission at the start when COVID hit and we had to change it, we were able to just roll with the punches and keep it keep it moving, um, which which was great because we didn't have to refigure out what we were doing. It was just like, hey, look, instead of doing it in a in a room, now we're doing it all uh, sharing our screens out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the whole idea of this is this this central hub where everybody goes in and synchronous synchronous synchronously or asynchronously can sorry got my words all jumbled up can uh can i all get in here and work at the same time on the same whiteboard um so yeah let's uh let's drag down here and how do you get buy-in was a big question where so we're like okay let's let's make up the rules ourselves so how long are stand-ups are going to be when are they going to be how often are we going to do them what else do we have on here I had thou shalt arrive to stand ups on time. Uh, Thou shalt not be distracted with cell phone during stand ups. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, we we came up with kind of like our commandments of what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And at the time, I'll I'll give you I'll give you my free one. That's a beatitude. Actually, blessed are the short winded for they shall be invited back. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I love um, that this is everything on a single page. Uh -huh. It is your ways yeah. of working. It's what the work's coming up. It's what the work you're currently working on. It's how you can actually improve all on a single view that is interactive. <laughs> I just added that one in. Blessed are the short winded. For they will, for they will be invited back. Yeah. <laughs> is that a freebie, Carl? Is that it is a freebie because it's, it's it's quite an important one because actually, if you can't get to the point quickly, you can't get to the point. There you go. All right, let me get to the point then. So, uh, <laughs> over here, this is this is the meat and potatoes of the uh, of the thing that I'm showing you guys here. After you come up with the feedback and you drag it down, kind of in long form. Like they're, they're typing out into a sticky note and they're just putting down, hey, this is, you know, something that we all need to start doing now where maybe um, nobody's utilizing LinkedIn and we have access to LinkedIn Navigator and they're paying for licenses and nobody's leveraging it. Maybe yeah. that could be a way to start conversations to say, oh, uh, to a potential prospect, instead of trying to sell them and hey, hey, ask for a meeting, maybe be like, uh, here, I read your blog. I thought that this was insightful and I found another YouTube video on Agile World that you might find uh, also insightful. So Love it. That or enjoying be, the marketing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That could be, by the way, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, <laughs> the, um, anyways, so that could be your foot in the door to a conversation in a way that one of the reps on the team is getting their foot in the door into organizations where other people are just trying to spam out a bunch of emails and it's not getting anywhere. So yes. we, could, we could do start doing in A3 control. By the way, this is how this works. All the A column is, this is based on Stephen Covey's circles of control, but I put it out into like a matrix because I just like that visually how to see it and it breaks down a little easier for me, it's all personal preference. But A1, this is what you can control. B, this is what your manager can influence. And C, this is what you would like senior leadership to address. So all the team members, all the, all the sales reps are reporting up to me, the manager. And, and then I'm seeing them put stuff in the middle column. This is what they want me to deal with. This is what they are, have the ability on the left-hand side, what they have the ability and the authority to go ahead and deal with themselves. And um, that's, that's also kind of like an agile at its core thing that we adopted. Yeah. At the highest level though, if I see stuff that they're putting into my thing and then I'm like, all right, I, maybe, maybe they want less of this, but I don't even know where to start to deal with that. I'll move it over here from the middle column into the right-hand column. So then the business unit executive comes in and sees, oh, okay. That's, that's my, that's on my plate of things to figure out how to do now, or maybe that could start, we could have a meeting about it and we could say, Hey, look, all the reps are asking for less of blah, blah, blah. And, and then I, I want you to know that I moved this into your C2. Um, so it's start doing, stop doing, uh, wait, wait, more of less of start doing, stop doing and keep doing that covers all your bases pretty much of all the things, all the types of feedback that could, that could come up. And then here, check this out. Over here on the right, let's say we're getting a lot of like stop doing. So over here on the C4 senior leadership box, that could be like, hey, maybe there's a broken system, something structural, some kind of legacy system that's getting in the way of the high value work that we want them to, to do. So then let's have a brainstorming session about it. Actually, I don't. I don't know what's in this. It's something from a previous call. So, oh, build a doghouse. We're doing a uh, epic deconstruction of let's let's build a doghouse here. So, um, what is it? Location in the yard. How big is it going to be? We got to get some lumber. Here's another valuable idea, right? And then it looks like they created Jira tickets out of it too. So, this will this will you in in theory you could have a whiteboard tie into a Jira system where you could actually manage the tickets that way, which is pretty cool. So you you go you go into here, and then it's really good because I know I've mentioned this earlier, but the fact that it's it's everything on one screen, mm -hmm. exactly. and you can always go back to remember it's almost mm -hmm. like a lot of teams' ways of working. You have multiple different workshops. 
you know, you'll, you'll use one tool for a retrospective, you'll use one tool to actually plan your next set of working load, you've got one tool with your ways of working, this is templated out in a format where everything is on one page. Thus meaning that if you need to remind yourself, you need to update it, you need to add something. If you've got someone new who comes in, everything is in one place that you can work around. And you're constantly, I can see, you're constantly improving and working out ways of improving. If you're in a meeting and you're discussing, you know, this is the workload we've got at the moment, but actually I've got an idea. So you have this brainstorming functionality in one easy accessible place and it stays in that place and that's exactly. what i love about it it's, it's very clever thank you thank you i uh again it was it was not my original idea i just kind of took the idea and ran with it you know um when you know moving from in person to remote like that that just meant that the whole fabric of how we gathered and, and and engaged and collaborated at work, it fundamentally changed. And we saw people from solo consultants all the way to, you know, Fortune 100 organizations. They're, they're adopting these types of workspaces to meet their collaboration needs. And then when we're, as we're moving back into the office again, um, that means continuing to marry the physical whiteboard experience with the, the power of the online collaboration. Right. Because yeah. in the old days, what was it? You, you take a sticky note, you put it up on the whiteboard. Right. And then you would have somebody with their iPhone take a picture of it at the end of the day. Or you would have somebody like sitting there and like putting it all into Excel at the end of the day. Like, or, that's or, the, just... or you'd leave it overnight and the cleaners would come in and remove it all and throw <laughs> it away, which is yeah. more common than you might imagine. <laughs> yeah. Or you, somebody opens the door and a gust of wind just knocks yeah. off all the. I thought you shouldn't use cheap post-it notes. You should use the real McCoy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But um, yeah, this this felt obvious for us. You know, beyond whiteboarding, a lot of people have seen this need for collaboration tools across different types of projects, different initiatives. So now it's it's more than just the simple whiteboard. This is just now. This is your visual hub for all your team's projects that you could all yeah. get in on. You could work on it together and. Uh, yeah, a lot of these collaboration companies, they've, they've, their business has expanded aggressively, obviously, during COVID, like just digitally transforming the whole value proposition. That's all those, all those things are now working in the, their, their favor. So like, one of the, one of the big pain points, I'll, I'll just talk to this point real quick. Um, everybody during the pandemic, like, got real tired of Zoom meetings real quick. Um, a lot of us got real... <laughs> It just feels less connected since uh, moving to remote work. And, you know, for me personally, I, I, I experienced a lot of video fatigue of, of no, no offense to you guys. I, I love, you know, being on here with you, You're, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, the, that's what employers uh, have been seeing is this pain point is like, how do we help our employees feel more connected? How do we have this good culture? How do we re reduce that meeting fatigue? So having a single place for everybody to come in and jump in and contribute, that reduces a lot of that pain of traditional video meetings. Rather yeah. than one person giving one stand and deliver on a PowerPoint for an hour, like, no, everybody's on, the, everybody's on their phones, you know? So it's, it's a, and it's a you're dynamic right there. place. Yeah. You are right there. Because even though, I mean, I was uh, collaborating with a colleague with me today. And unfortunately, it was, it was due to technical issues. It was a, a situation where it was me sharing my screen and actually doing all the work mm -hmm. while the other person was viewing. And you don't feel satisfied. You are getting bored. You lose concentration because you have that need that you want to collaborate. And these tools are absolutely amazing to be able to do. And it's great that there's a template. <laughs> format here to be able to do it but you're right we need to collaborate there needs to be ways of collaborating and yeah. otherwise you will just turn your video off and technically your class does i'm there but are you right. really there are you really exactly I, I would love to know what the numbers are on like what oh, percentage. I'm, here. I'm still here i'm still here <laughs> I, I, i'm i'm uh i'm having dinner no i'm no i'm just joking he's checking his twitter right now um <laughs> But yeah, the, uh, the the other thing, the other point to that is uh, it's obviously, you know, a, a place for idea sharing and people don't actually have to jump in verbally either. If like if I'm on a phone call and I've got like a bunch of alpha personalities and they're all dominating the conversation, I can't get a word in edgewise. 
like if we have a place like like uh, a whiteboard where I could just put sticky notes with my ideas up on there, that's the option of providing valuable feedback. Also anonymously, if I choose, right there in the workspace. So you get a lot of introverts on the call. Maybe you're not going to hear them speak up when you've got one person dominating the whole conversation for an hour on a PowerPoint. But when you're all in there working and you know sharing ideas, that's a you're going to get the introverts opinions and valuable feedback that way too. So I think that's, I think that's a game changer. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank you ever so much for showing us this. It's been really, really welcome. good conversation. Good fun as usual on that lot. And thank you very much for joining us in Agile world. Anything you're else you want welcome. to add before we go? Um, no, that's it. I, uh, I'm down here in Dallas. Uh, I'm looking for a new job opportunity. If uh, you're hiring right now, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'll, I'm sure uh, she'll put my uh, my details in there in uh, my contact information. So, yeah. That's so cool. Bye. Thank you very Thank much, you Joe. Much. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day. See you.